I get asked this question a lot. Do insurances cover platelet-rich plasma injections? And if they don't, why not? I'm going to answer these questions as well as go over what it will take for more insurances to start covering PRP treatments. Stay tuned to the end as I'll give you a useful tool to make sure you are not overpaying for inferior or low quality PRP. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. So currently in the United States, the only healthcare insurance that covers PRP injections is TRICARE. And for those of you who don't know what TRICARE is, it is the healthcare insurance for the United States military active duty service members and their family. And this makes total sense. TRICARE has a large incentive to get their active duty military members back to being healthy and physically active. But what about all the other insurance companies? Cigna, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Aetna, United Healthcare, Medicare, how come these major insurances are not covering platelet-rich plasma injections? Every single one of them still considers PRP to be experimental and without sufficient evidence. But in reality, there is plenty of evidence that PRP injections result in better patient outcomes. Let's just take knee osteoarthritis as an example. Multiple randomized control trials as well as systematic reviews and meta-analyses have shown that PRP injections are better when compared to corticosteroids, hyaluronic acid, Acid and placebo for the treatment of mild to moderate symptomatic knee osteoarthritis. Newer studies have even shown that PRP injections can potentially slow down the progression of arthritis and delay the need for a joint replacement surgery. And that's just with knee arthritis. PRP injections have also been shown to be superior to other non-surgical treatments for common conditions such as tennis elbow and golfer's elbow. In fact, a recent systematic review found that platelet-rich plasma injections offered similar levels of improvements in pain and function when compared to surgery. Even major medical societies have written about the benefits of platelet-rich plasma. For example, the European Alliance of Associations for Rheumatology put out a consensus statement with a few of the following highlights. Here's what they wrote. Number one, intra-articular injections of PRP are an effective symptomatic treatment for early to moderate knee osteoarthritis. Number two, Intraarticular injections of PRP may be useful in severe knee osteoarthritis. And number three, PRP treatment should be offered as a second line treatment after failure of oral or non-pharmacological treatment for knee osteoarthritis. This means that if oral anti-inflammatory medications like ibuprofen or naproxen or exercise and physical therapy do not help decrease pain and symptoms, the European Alliance of Associations for Rheumatology recommends proceeding with platelet-rich plasma Plasma injections for the treatment of symptomatic knee osteoarthritis. And what about in the United States? The American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons put out a technology overview summary on platelet-rich plasma. The authors conclude that the literature supports the hypothesis that PRP can offer statistically significantly greater benefit compared to placebo and active treatment alternatives such as hyaluronic acid, corticosteroid, and NSAIDs for patient-reported outcomes related to pain and symptoms for time points up to 12 months. And here's what a consensus statement from the American Medical Society for Sports Medicine say about PRP. They write that the research suggests that PRP injections are more effective in reducing pain and improving function than steroid or hyaluronic acid injections for knee osteoarthritis, particularly in those who are younger and have mild to moderate disease. When it comes to tendons, they write that multiple randomized control trials have demonstrated that lateral epicondylopathy responds positively to PRP injections. There have also been positive results seen in randomized control trials for the treatment of gluteus medius tendinopathy and plantar fasciopathy with PRP. So with all of this data and with major medical societies confirming the efficacy and even superiority of platelet-rich plasma injections, why won't insurances cover this procedure? The first thing insurance companies may say is that it's too new and has an unknown safety profile. But honestly, this is a non-issue. The beauty of platelet-rich plasma is that it comes from your own body. It is literally your own cells, and you can argue this is one of the safest things that you can do. Multiple randomized controlled trials and systematic reviews have shown that PRP is effective and safe in the long run. The same cannot be said of cortisone injections, which of course is covered by insurances. Cortisone has been shown to weaken tendons and damage healthy cartilage, leading to worse arthritis. The second thing insurance companies will say is that PRP 
therapy has been shown to be not effective or that there continue to be clinical trials showing that PRP is no better than placebo. And because of the conflicting results, they don't want to cover the procedure. The rebuttal to this is rather nuanced, so I will again use knee arthritis as an example. So in my opinion, there is now tons of data to support the use of platelet-rich plasma injections for the treatment of symptomatic knee osteoarthritis. You can watch all my other videos where I go through study after study that show benefits to pain, function, and even slowing down the progression of arthritis. This includes randomized controlled trials, systematic reviews, and meta-analyses. But every once in a while, we will get a clinical trial like the RESTORE trial or the PEAK trial. The authors from the RESTORE trial conclude, among patients with symptomatic mild to moderate radiographic knee osteoarthritis, intraarticular injection of PRP compared with injection of saline placebo did not result in a significant difference in symptoms or joint structure at 12 months. These findings do not support the use of PRP for the management of knee osteoarthritis. And here's what the authors from the PEAK trial concluded. They write, there is no evidence that single or multiple PRP had any additional benefit effect compared to saline injection up to 12 months follow-up after treatment of early stage symptomatic osteoarthritis of the knee. And so when insurance companies glance at the conclusion of one of these studies, they immediately say, see, it doesn't work. We're not gonna cover PRP. Unfortunately, many physicians also glance at these studies and conclude the same thing, that PRP doesn't work. Take this for example. This article was from the most recent journal of the American Academy of Family Physicians. The title is, Another study fails to find platelet-rich plasma injections effective for adults with degenerative joint disease of the knee. Here they are looking at the results from the PEAK trial and the title is intentionally provocative. The goal is to lead primary care physicians into believing that PRP injections don't work. What most people don't understand is that not all PRP is the same. Dosing really matters, just like for any other drug that we prescribe to patients. For example, let's say you have a headache and you wanna get rid of it. You're given 20 milligrams of ibuprofen, you take it and it doesn't do anything. You conclude ibuprofen does not work for headaches. However, it turns out that the therapeutic dose of ibuprofen to treat headaches is actually 400 milligrams or even 600 milligrams, and you underdose the medication by a factor of 20. So then, is it accurate to write an article titled, Another study fails to find ibuprofen is effective for adults with headaches, or should the title actually be low-dose ibuprofen is not effective for the treatment of headaches? And the conclusion should be more studies should be done to study the dose response curve. The same thing is true for platelet-rich plasma. Both the RESTORE trial and the PEAK trial used low-dose PRP. The RESTORE trial used a kit that produced 1 to 2 billion platelets. The PEAK trial used a kit that produced around 2 to 3 billion platelets. It turns out newer clinical studies have shown that there is a dose response curve of PRP, just like any other medication. And you want to aim for 10 billion platelets to get a clinical effect for knee osteoarthritis. So the information we actually gained from the RESTORE and the PEAK trial is clarity on the low end of the dose response curve for PRP. This is also why many new studies are starting to examine the high end of the dose response curve by starting with volumes of at least 60 cc's of blood and even up to 120 cc's of blood. By the way, if you're finding this information useful so far, please click the like button. It'll help the video spread to more people and help them too. Thanks for doing that. Okay, the last thing I want to touch on is what I think will finally get insurances to cover PRP injections. And of course, it all comes down to money. We need more studies looking at the cost-benefit analysis of platelet-rich plasma injections. To date, there have not been a lot of studies on this topic, but take a look at this recent study out of Iran. They performed a cost-benefit analysis of platelet-rich plasma injections for the treatment of knee osteoarthritis for their specific country. They write that intraarticular injection of PRP compared to other injections is a cost-effective treatment option for patients with mild and moderate knee osteoarthritis. In addition, Intraarticular injection of PRP was identified as the best injection with the highest level of net monetary benefit for knee osteoarthritis management. I firmly believe that if this analysis was done in other countries, including the United States, we would see similar results. PRP leads to better symptom improvement and better function. This allows people to not only be more effective at work, which will generate more productivity and more revenue for their companies, but they are also able to exercise more. 
This means they are less likely to gain weight, less likely to have high blood pressure, less likely to have diabetes, high cholesterol, or all sorts of other medical comorbidities. Elderly with osteoarthritis are also more likely to exercise and this will prevent muscle atrophy. This leads to reduced fracture risk and decreased costs related to hospitalizations and elderly care. This is where PRP can have a dramatic improvement on the quality of life and healthcare of our population. But until these cost-benefit analyses are done, I find it unlikely that insurances will cover PRP injections because again, it all comes down to money. The last thing I want to leave you with is this chart. I adapted this chart from Dr. Centeno, who is a leader in orthobiologic therapies. The goal is to allow patients to easily identify how many platelets they are getting in their PRP injection and not to overpay for low-dose PRP injections like the ones that were done in the RESTORE trial and the PEAK trial. Remember, for large joints such as knees, hips, and shoulders, you want to aim for around a 60cc blood draw, which will net you approximately 10 billion platelets. For smaller joints such as feet or wrists, a 30cc blood draw may be sufficient. And if you're interested in learning more about the science behind platelet-rich plasma, check out this video next, or you can check out this playlist on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.